Hello, welcome to Movie Summaries. Today we are summarizing a 2020 horror and thriller movie called Spell. Fair warning, there are spoilers in the summary. Enjoy, and be sure to subscribe to watch more videos weekly and hit like. The movie begins with an audio of a boy getting a good old ass whooping from his father. It turns out, it is a man named Marquis Woods, getting flashbacks of his horrible childhood. He has scars all over his chest and back from the physical abuse he suffered at the hands of his father. Mark, for short, suddenly snaps back to the present when he hears the voice of his wife, Viora, calling out for him. It turns out, Viora has gotten herself locked in a room. The doorknob is jammed. Viora asks him to break down the door, but Mark refuses to kick down a Belgian door. That cost him $1,500. I mean, he has a point. Viora gets frustrated, but Mark tells her that he won't break down the door, and he is calling a locksmith. When Viora gets even more upset, Mark finally stops kidding with her and picks the door lock with his pen. This skill can be very useful. Stay tuned to see how. Viora at times gets frustrated with Mark's playful nature, but she loves him dearly. After he gets done pranking his wife, Mark goes to his high-paying law firm job. Although jovial at home, at work, he is a ruthless defense lawyer. He doesn't let his race come in the way of his work, and he won't hesitate going tooth and nail against a black plaintiff in court. He believes he doesn't work for love, he works for money. Later, Mark gets a call from his father's lawyer, Otis Peely, from Appalachia, Kentucky. Peely informs Mark that his abusive father has passed away, and there are matters of his estate that need to be resolved. Despite not being close with him, Mark seems to be a bit shaken by the news. After returning home from work, he breaks the news to his wife and two kids, Sam, Sarah, and Tied On. It is revealed that Mark hasn't seen his father since Mark ran away from home when he was a kid. Mark says that his father wasn't a kind man and stuck in time. Viora suggests that regardless of Mark's history with his father, they should visit Mark's hometown to pay their final respect to his late father and close that chapter for good. Then, Viora changes the subject to Tied On getting bullied in school. Mark advises his son to talk to his teacher and warns him against fighting. Mark feels that it's what society expects from them as African Americans. Viora is a bit taken aback by Mark. Mark's response, but stops short of voicing her opinion. The next day, the Woods family heads to Appalachia, Kentucky, an African-American village, on a small private plane, piloted by Mark. Dang, he can fly, and is a lawyer. Before reaching their destination, they stop for refueling. At a gas station store, Mark comes across human skulls and preserved animals and sex for sale, most likely for black magic. He rolls his eyes and grabs a water bottle and heads to the front counter, but only to find the store owner sewing a mojo bag. It reminds him of his childhood days with a superstitious father. The store owner passionately tells him, the mojo bag is for protection from folks looking to conjure your ass. The man suggests Mark take one of the bags for protection, but Mark tells him he doesn't believe in these things. Meanwhile, outside, Tadon talks to a local guy. The talkative rural guy asks him about his strange fingers, and Tadon reveals that he busted it while playing basketball. Tadon further reveals that he came here for his grandfather's funeral in the yonder foothills. The mere mention of the yonder foothills spooks the talkative guy and makes him abruptly go about his business. Seeing the guy abruptly leave, Tadon makes fun of him, but Viora quickly corrects him. The family takes off to their final destination. No pun intended. Mark asks his kids how they are liking his hometown, but the two teens insult the place, making fun of the local people, calling them inbred hillbillies. Seeing her children's lack of respect for other people, Viora gets upset and has an argument with Mark. She feels that Mark enables their kids' behavior by not disciplining them. Mark quickly retorts that he will never be like his abusive father, who put hands on him. He adds that if he had his way, Tidon and Samsara would spend the rest of their lives in a fancy boardroom, and not in the jungle that he avoided all his life. Viora responds, sometimes that jungle comes back to find you. As they continue to argue, it begins to rain, and their plane gets caught in a storm. The family panics as the plane shudders after entering some turbulence. Mark loses control of the plane, and the screen blacks out. Mark then gains consciousness in an unfamiliar room with bruises all over his body. He gathers all his strength and drags himself to the room's window with his broken foot. He realizes that he is in the attic of someone's farmhouse. Suddenly, the homeowner, Miss Eloise, an old but sharp lady, appears. She tries to get him back on the bed, but Mark resists and asks her about his family. Miss Eloise, who is very strict and particular about everything, calls her husband Earl and their giant son, Louis. Big boy Louis picks up Mark and basically throws him on the bed like a sack of potatoes, but Mark continues to ask about his family. Earl tells Mark that he was in an accident and there wasn't anyone on the plane except him. When Mark refuses to believe that, he insists on finding his family. Miss Eloise blows a powder over his face and he falls asleep. Later, Miss Eloise is seen making Mark's boogity doll. She plans to make Mark healthy using the doll. She explains that the more it resembles him, with nail clippings, hair, blood, pinch of semen, yeah, you heard that right, the more it is him. The more good things happen to the doll, the more good things happen to the real Mark. Miss Eloise is a self-proclaimed, bona fide, back in the hills, root worker. She places the voodoo doll on the window and secures the window with a white powder to keep the devil away. After she leaves, Mark, who doesn't believe in these things, starts looking for a way to escape. The door has been locked 
So Mark sneaks out from the window onto the roof. He jumps from one roof to another in the heavy rain and reaches the barn where Miss Eloise is gathered with other villagers. It turns out Miss Eloise heals people with her root work for a living. Earl tells the villagers that today Miss Eloise is going to use animal parts, but on the day of the blood moon, she is going to do something much bigger. Is he talking about human sacrifice? The treatment begins. Earl cuts a cat's tongue and puts it in Eloise's dumb patient's boogity. Miss Eloise then reads some spells and the dumb patient starts speaking. The crowd rejoices as Mark watches it all unfold from a large peephole on the roof. Eloise then moves on to her next patient, a blind man named Julius. Earl puts the cat's eyes in Julius's boogity, while Miss Eloise puts a goat's eyes in Julius's eye socket. Okay, this is getting real freaking freaky. Miss Eloise then reads a spell, and lo and behold, Julius gains eyesight and points at Mark, peeking from the roof. Mark quickly ducks, but Miss Eloise suspects that Mark has gotten out. She proceeds to inspect the attic with Earl and Giant Lewis as Mark tries to race back to his room with his injured foot in the heavy rain. Mark manages to reach his room on time, but Miss Eloise notices the open window and Mark soaking wet. She decides to let it slide and asks Mark what he thought of her abilities. Mark expresses skepticism of her treatment methods and says she is like his father, a superstitious person. Mark feels that her treatments are psychosomatic, explaining somebody can believe in something so bad until it physically becomes true. Miss Eloise, offended, retorts that people believe in these treatments because they don't have healthcare in their village. She then locks the window and door before leaving him alone. The next day, Mark wakes up to find a plate full of meat. He relishes the dish prepared by Miss Eloise and apologizes to her for being rude the other day. Miss Eloise accepts his apology and goes to the kitchen to refill Mark's plate, leaving the attic door open. Mark uses the opportunity to take out the bell attached to the door. After Mark finishes the food, Miss Eloise collects the bones. She explains that these bones can tell one's future. She tells him that these bones are telling her that on the day of the blood moon, Mark will get all the poison out of his body and meet his family. She then hands the bones to him and asks him to throw it. When Mark passes the offer, she tells him that she's just like Lewis before she got him straight, a uppity house slave. She tells him, you may live in the city, but you are from this land and everything that empowers it. This is the blood that's running in your veins. After Miss Eloise leaves him with the bones, Mark, bored, assembles the bones. To his dismay, he realizes that it's a human hand. It appears to be his son, Tidon's hand, as it too has a broken middle finger. Not only did he eat human, he just ate his own son's hand. Gross and traumatizing. Mark panics and pukes everything he consumed. Fed up, Mark uses his door picking skills to unlock the door and sneaks out of the room. He drags himself downstairs with his injured feet, but before he could escape. Miss Eloise's pet crow starts making noise and forces him to hide. Miss Eloise rushes to the attic to check up on Mark while he grabs a flashlight and flees. He runs into the woods and comes across the debris of the plane. Inside, he notices the blood of his family splattered around, but no dead bodies. Mark notices a hut nearby. However, before he could investigate, he collapses on the ground. He wakes up in Miss Eloise's attic the next day and notices her leaving for the market with Earl. He removes the dressing from his feet and to his astonishment, he finds a nail shoved under his feet put by Miss Eloise to keep him from healing and running away. He gathers all his strength to pull the nail out and tries his best to keep himself from screaming. He again ventures out and notices three newly filled graves. Assuming the worst, he frantically digs the grave, but fortunately, they are just graves of sacrificed animals. I mean, that's worrisome and a big deal too, but at least it's not his wife and children. He heads to the barn and comes across a basement where he finds dark magic books, dust, and desecrated dead bodies. He goes through her books and learns that she is preparing him for the blood moon day for transference of life spell. In this spell, a person's life is sacrificed to mend someone else's injuries. Mark decides to pull a reverse Uno card on her and steals Lewis's voodoo doll and makes a new one for Miss Eloise. When he proceeds to return to his room before the old witch comes back, he hears the sound of a phone ring. He takes the phone to his room but forgets to close the main door. Miss Eloise notices the door and suspects that Mark managed to get out again. She orders Lewis to get the axe and rushes to the attic while Mark quickly puts the spike back in his foot. Miss Eloise inspects his dressing and doesn't find anything suspicious, so she lets him be. After she leaves, Mark calls 911. The call goes through, and he talks to a local policeman named Tom Pine. The policeman reveals that Viora and Sam Sarah came to the police station a week ago and reported him and Tydon missing. Mark controls his emotions and tells the officer that he has been held hostage by Miss Eloise and Earl. The policeman recognizes the couple 
and Sheriff informs Mark that he is about to drop by Miss Eloise's farm and tells Mark to stay by the phone. As the policeman arrives, Mark takes out the spike once again. Enraged at Mark for calling the police, Miss Eloise storms into the attic. She grabs Mark's voodoo doll and slams Mark on the bed. She takes away his voice and wraps a thread around the boogity, effectively tying the real Mark up. After she leaves to meet the officer, Mark hops to the window but fails to speak and alert the cop. The cop calls Mark, but his phone dies, refusing to give up. Mark grabs his boogity and hops downstairs, but by then the policeman leaves. He follows the policeman and eventually catches up to him. After putting a thread in the boogity's mouth, Mark gets his voice back. He asks the policeman to drive away and explains everything to him. The policeman finds it hard to believe that Miss Eloise and Earl, who he says are a sweet couple, could do such a thing. Suddenly, Mark realizes that the cop has driven them back to Miss Eloise's farm. It turns out, the corrupt cop is in on it. Mark is then dragged into the barn, where the villagers have gathered to witness Mark's sacrifice. To Mark's astonishment, Viora, Samsara, and Tidon are brought into the barn. It turns out, Tidon is alive after all. They seem to be under Miss Eloise's spell, and usually quiet and calm. Miss Eloise then blows her magic dust on Mark, and he falls asleep. Mark is then laid on a table as the villagers cheer, intending to replace Earl's heart with Mark's. Miss Eloise proceeds to stab Mark with a dagger, but Mark blocks her attack and stabs Earl with a spike right in the heart. Panic ensues. Miss Eloise and others run out of fear. It turns out, Mark had switched Miss Eloise's magic dusts, and as a result, didn't really lose consciousness. Mark sure learned a thing or two about root working from his father. He then wakes his family up from Miss Eloise's spell and embraces them. Mark notices that Tidon's hand had been amputated. Tidon's hand has been amputated. Sheesh. So Mark did munch on poor Tidon's hand curry. Mark then ambushes the policeman and steals his car. However, instead of leaving with his family, he then returns to the barn as Miss Eloise and the other villagers return with Louis. Miss Eloise sends Louis to kill Mark, and the giant beast breaks into the barn. Mark tries to fight him, but Louis easily subdues him and starts choking him. However, suddenly, Louis starts gasping for air and vomits a lot of water before passing away. To her dismay, Miss Eloise notices that Mark had drowned Louis's boogity doll. Enraged, she screams like a witch and confronts Mark. She admits that he was smart for drowning Louis's boogity doll, but he can't do the same to her because she has hidden hers really well. She then proceeds to stab him, but Mark blows the magic dust over her face and she freezes. Mark then brings out Miss Eloise's boogity doll that he made himself and hammers it, sending the real Miss Eloise flying. Her body knocks over a wooden pillar and the barn catches fire. Before exiting, Mark traps Miss Eloise inside the barn with the white dust that is used to keep the devil from leaving or entering the space. As Miss Eloise burns to death inside the barn, the villagers corner Mark. However, Mark threatens to use their boogity dolls, making them immediately retreat. He goes back to his family as the fire engulfs the barn. Mark then leaves the village with his family, and the movie ends with the scene of Mark's boogity doll, still intact, in the barn's basement. Damn. Glad Mark and his family made it out of there alive together. Hope you enjoyed our summary. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos weekly. Thanks.